In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by DinoTech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Tom Tweedy dominated the Formula 5000s at Sandown last weekend, winning the main feature race despite an early challenge from the manager of Brian Sala. The weekend was blighted by red flags after two serious incidents in the first two races. Saturday's first race didn't even complete a lap after the Lowells of Andrew Robson and Paul Zazarin came together at the exit of Turn 4. Both cars were seriously damaged, but thankfully neither driver was badly hurt. Sunday's first race was also red flagged after four-time Australian Gold Star champion Alfredo Costanzo crashed his McLaren M10B at the top of the rise. Once again, the driver wasn't injured, but the once immaculate McLaren was left looking very second-hand. There was a massive field in the Group S sports cars and it was Rusty French in the Di Tommaso Pantera GTS who comfortably won all three races, leading home a diverse field of classic sports cars led by Jeff Morgan's Porsche. David Hulk in the Walkinshaw Group A Commodore was the man to beat in the Heritage Touring Car races. Former Australian GT champion Mark Eddy drove the X-Factory Nissan Skyline, but a spin at Turn 2 in the final race put him out of contention. Rod Markland in his Skyline GTR was second in the feature race, with Brian Sala's Ford Sierra in third. Although not an historic class, the Victorian Sports Sedan Series added plenty of thunder. Western Australian driver Ron Moller continued his successful Eastern States journey, once again dominating the local sports sedan field. After an easy win at Phillip Island in the final round of the state championships, Moller's Camaro was in a class of its own, winning all three races. Best of the locals was Chaz Talbot in the Trans Am Corvette, and Lee Ulhorn putting in a remarkable performance in his under two litre Mazda RX-7. The race also saw the long-awaited debut of two exciting new cars to the local scene. Shane Woodman's immaculate BMW Chev and Liam Hill's long-awaited Hyundai XL. Well, the old story was the Datsun 1600, which we basically reshelled with the existing space frame chassis which we had built. So the Hyundai was just a simple bolt-on fix and a bit more aerodynamic, a bit slopier in the nose, so it was a, a good option in the long run. You've had the car around on a number of occasions at various car shows at the Australian Grand Prix. What sort of reaction do you get from people to a, to a sports sedan Hyundai XL? It's generally quite good, actually. Um, everyone seems to uh, look a bit sceptical at first when they see it, then come around, which is quite surprising. We actually had it at a muscle car show, and it was the only sort of, uh, what would you say, non-American Australian car, and everyone come around and thought it was great. We didn't get any negative feedback at all. That's running this Nissan SR20 in it. And as for the drive line, it's got a Hollinger sequential six-speed, and then the diff still runs a Nissan R200 diff. So what are the long-term plans for the car? Are you hoping to keep it in this current spec run as an under two-litre car, or perhaps um, might you put a bigger engine in, or perhaps even a turbocharger at some stage? There's potential for the bigger engine or turbocharger. We built the car with that every intention to go a bit bigger with it, but we'll see how far we can go with the under two-litre car if we chase the aerodynamics and pull a bit more weight out of it. It might be, might be half sort of uh, stout against the bigger cars, hopefully. What's, about, what's the state of sports sedan racing? We've got a fabulous turnout this weekend, 33 cars. At the national level, not so, uh, not so good. And even at the state level, there's been small fields. Uh, why do you think we've got 33 cars this weekend and we normally can't we struggle to get 15 or 20? Oh, it's obviously the promotion of the event. You've got a bit of a crowd. There's a bit of hype around the place and everyone wants to run where in that sort of conditions. But if you have a look at the uh, entry list for the 50k plate next weekend, oh, in a few weeks' time, it's going to be quite... Uh, quite large as well so there's lots of new cars popping out and the existing cars are being rebuilt it's sort of just that cycle of 
cycle that continually happens. Do you think with these new cars like your car and Shane Woodman's car, Ian Rice's Monaro on the way, do you think that there's a potential for a bit of a revival for sports sedans? Oh, definitely, and we're not, they're not the only cars that are out there. There's another list of 10 cars in Victoria that are, that are at the same stage. A touch of Le Mans came back to Sandown as Russell Kepnich's Group C Porsche 956C held out the open wheeler brigade to win Groups Q and R. And there was a titanic struggle in Groups M and O sports and racing cars as Keith Simpson in his gorgeous Brabham BT16 duelled it out with Peter Strauss in the Brabham BT31 and Bill Hemmings Elfin 400. Although Melbourne's unpredictable weather might have caused some to stay away, the 2013 return of the Thunder was a huge success, and the meeting has certainly found its place as one of the standout highlights in Victoria's packed late-year motorsport calendar and a worthy injection of real horsepower into the spring racing car. Well, that was our story from the Sandown Historic. What I thought I'd do, just as a bonus for In Pit Lane Channel viewers here on YouTube, we're going to uh, just show you some of the Formula 5000 footage. I'm just going to shut up and let you watch some of this, uh, watch and listen to some of these glorious cars heading around Sandown. So enjoy for the next uh, four or five minutes or so some great footage from the 2013 Historic Sandown and the great Formula 5000s. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.